All right, thank you very much. Uh, again, uh, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Cole, for, thanks for providing me with the opportunity to testify uh, on the amendments that I offer, uh, number 97 and number 98 to the Fiscal Year 23 National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, led in cooperation uh, with Representative Ruiz and with over 144 co-sponsors between the two amendments. Uh, the version of my uh, bill, H.R. 1282, which would expand eligibility to certain military retirees for concurrent receipt of veterans' disability compensation and retirement pay or uh, combat-related special compensation. In the past, Military service members found to have endured a service-connected disability could not collect their pension and disability pay in unison. To receive VA disability compensation, veterans had to forfeit their retirement benefits and pay back dollar for dollar the amount that would have been owed to them if they had received both benefits. A great injustice. In the fiscal year 2004 National Defense Authorization Act, Congress created the Concurrent Retirement and Disability Pay Program. In doing so, veterans who are 100% disabled were author, uh, authorized to receive both earned benefits, non, uh, as known as uh, concurrent receipt for the first time ever. My dad sponsored the legislation, <laughs> Congressman Bill Arrakis. Since then, the law has expanded the eligibility to receive military retirement pay and their VA disability pay concurrently to military retirees with 20 or more years of service and a 50% or higher disability rating. Under current law, concurrent receipt for military retirees who have a disability rating of 50% or higher was phased in through 2014. While this certainly marks tremendous progress, much more needs to be done. Medically retired veterans, for example, with less than 20 years of service who were wounded in combat must still offset their DOD retirement pay by their VA disability compensation. Many of these veterans had the full intention of serving for 20 years or more and gained full retirement benefits, but through no fault of their own, were unable uh, due to their service and sacrifice in the line of duty. So in other words, they were injured. This group of retired veterans, who are also known as Chapter 20, uh, 61 retirees, are re arguably the most at risk because of their complex combat injuries and are just as deserving, obviously they are, as those who served greater than 20 years of service. By creating the CRDP, I firmly believe that Congress admitted that the offset required of disability veterans was wrong. Approximately 550,000 military retirees are eligible to receive both military retirement pay and VA disability compensation, but are prohibited under the current guidelines of this program. In my view, I see these veterans as essentially being taxed for their service and sacrifice because they were deemed service-connected disabled. Wrong, wrong, and we've been admitted that through previous uh, legislation. My amendment, along with Dr. Ruiz, would remove that tax and the disparity between these combat disabled veterans and the rest of the population. This is a very popular and desired policy fix. I think you know that, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Ranking Member. I want to emphasize that we received over 90 co-sponsors for number 98, and that one was sponsored by Dr. Ruiz uh, and myself, and over 50 for 97, number 97, in the short period available to garner amendment co-sponsorships for this bill. These are two of the most co-sponsored amendments for this year's and DAA, and I recommend you take one, one or the other, Mr. Chairman, 97 or 98. I'm not asking for too much. This is only dwarfed by the support for the standalone bill and the Senate companion with over 260 co-sponsors in the House 
and 58 co-sponsors in the Senate. Most veteran service organizations, including the American Legion, the VFW, DAV, VVA, ANVETS, Military Officers Association of America, Fleet Service Association, uh, the American Ex-Prisoners of War, and the Association of the Navy strongly support this bill. In fact, most everyone on the dais today, uh, on the panel today, have, has uh, co-sponsored the major Richard Starr Act, which I sponsored. I ask, as you, as you consider the amendments presented today, that you consider the overwhelming public and congressional support behind these amendments and the major Richard Starr Act and rule either 97 or 98 in order for debate on the floor. We're not asking for much. We want to vote on the floor. Thank you again for the opportunity to testify on these amendments, and I look forward to the discussion. Thank I yield you, back, Mr. Chairman. Thank final you. Final question, Ms. Powell, and we'll back to Bridges. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a number of amendments that I hope the committee